I love watching my wife preach. She's on fire. And listen, I'm excited to be with you guys. And here in a minute, I'm going to preach. But before I do, I want to pray for some people. But I got to uh, ask you to do something for me. If I call out a word of knowledge that concerns you, I want to ask you to break the fear of man. And to boldly acknowledge the word. Because here's the way words of knowledge work. Not right now. Okay. I'm, I'm talking about the words of knowledge. Because I'm going to give specific words. And when I do, if I call you out, I want you to respond. See, because there's no, there's no fear, only the love of God. And so we're going to do this. Listen, I felt like right in this section over here, there was someone that was in a car accident, and there's a whiplash injury to the neck, and even causes pain that goes down in the back. Who is this person that was in the car accident? Right in this section over here. Who, who was it? Listen, you guys, remember boldness. Don't be afraid. Where are you at? Come now, now, I want to be specific. There's a reason why I have to call out the one. The, the Bible says that Jesus never did a thing Unless, unless he first saw what his father was doing. Come here. Come here. Come here. Stay. Turn. Put your hands out. Right there. Whew. Right now we release the presence. We speak to that back. We speak to the neck. Every effect of the car accident. In the name of Jesus, release right now. And we release healing power on you. And we thank you, Jesus, that you release creative power. All the pain releases right now. In Jesus' name, we release that power of God. Amen. Amen. Now move, move your back. Move your back. Move your neck. <laughs> How does it feel? Yes, he feel better. Yeah, Come on, he pain's good. gone. Hallelujah. Now listen. The Lord is showing me that for about one year now, you have been very hungry for Holy Spirit, the Lord began to pull on your heart. He began to draw you closer to Him. And about a year ago, there's been something in you that opened up. And now God is going to meet you with His presence and your hunger is going to uh, cause the awakening to happen on the inside because you're not satisfied with religion but you want the more of Jesus. And I see him giving it to you right now. See, look, the Holy Spirit's coming on him. Put your hands out. Put your hands out. Put your hands out. 
There's his anointing coming on you right now. Hey, you better change the When you know, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie, don't lie. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. There he is. He's touching him. You stay right there. Hey, you better change the. Listen, is there someone with a deafness in the ear over here? Yes, like a deaf ear. One of the ears is deaf. Yeah, come here. Listen, tell him. Hey, does this word I give you make sense? ဒီမှာရေးပါဆိုစစ်အီယာစ်ဒီဘက်ချမ်းလို့မြင်ခိုင်းလို့ဖြစ်တယ်အိဗင်ဘီဖိုးဝီစတာတဒ်ဒီစ
Now listen, this is an interesting, you, you can go ahead and sit. This is an interesting word of knowledge. I saw someone riding a bike. And, and when they crash the bike, they mess up the ankle. And even the knee. Who is this person? Who is this person? Yeah, come here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> Jesus loves you. Which one? That one. Oh, okay. Put your hands out. Okay, yeah, he said he has photo. Okay, let us go. Actually, you know what? I want you to come here. Sit right here. Right there. And put, put your leg here. Come, uh, come here. Okay, love. Hold this mic for my face. See how Let me see. Okay. Put your legs up. Whew. Here, but come over here. Yeah, Father, we thank you Jesus for a creative miracle. I command the ankle and the knee be restored in Jesus' name. Release. Lucy. Now stand up. Go like this. Check it out. Check the ankle. Hey, roll over there. Run over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whew. Hey, run back. Run back. Run back. Run back. Run back. Wow. Hallelujah. Whoa. Wow. How does it feel? He's feeling very cool. Yeah, is the pain gone? Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. Jeez. Pain is gone? He said, no, no more pain. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Jeez. whoa. Praise the Lord. Whoa. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I see the Lord is going to put on you an entrepreneurial anointing. Whoa. 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 For finance. Yes. For finance. Whoa. For business. The Lord wants to confirm this to you. Because there's been things that God has put in your heart. And he spoke to you. But at times it felt like, really God, me? Do you understand what I'm saying? Does this make sense? Yes, he yeah, and, and I'm telling you, for the last two years, you've been trying to figure out what you're called to do. You've been trying to figure out your purpose. And for two years, you've been wrestling with God. Trying to figure out, where am I going? What am I doing? And I'm telling you, the Lord is confirming to you right now this entrepreneurial anointing. And he wants you to receive it right now. Put your hands out. Woo, Father, we just release Mark him for the business realm in Jesus' name. Ooh, mark him with signs and wonders. Come on, somebody give Jesus a big oh, hand. Whoa, 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 hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Now listen, put your hands out. Just put your hands out and keep receiving. But just stay seated. Stay seated. Because I want to look in the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's Jesus. someone right over here that, uh, that, that it's, uh, the pain goes down the side, like the side of the hip. And it's a sciatic nerve issue. Because of a disc in the back that's messed up. The pain shoots down the side. Who is this right but here? Dinama, dinama. If the Jews stand up. Dinama, there is somebody. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hallelujah. Stop right there. Take two steps back. No, no, no. no. Right there. Now put your hands out. Here comes the power of God, right there. <laughs> there is presence is touching you. 
Listen, he's going to recreate that back. He's going to recreate the nerve where there's nerve damage where there's pain that comes there's creative power coming on you right now so you're going to begin to feel the heat of God begin to touch your back and I'm telling you he's going to remove all the pain Whew, just put your hands up right now put your hands up thank you Lord Whew. There's this power coming on you. <laughs> Father, we thank you that the spirit of infirmity, the spirit of affliction, trauma, in the name of Jesus, release right now. Listen. Now, I want you to walk. I want you to walk. Come on, walk, 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 walk. Walk, walk, walk. walk, walk, walk. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Keep walking. Here, turn around. Walk. Walk fast, walk fast. Come. How does this feel? Yeah, he, she feels gone. It's gone. The pain is gone? Yes. How long did you have the pain? Two years. Come on, somebody give Jesus a Whoa! Oh, Hallelujah! Jesus. Praise the Lord. Oh, you can go ahead and sit. Listen, I also felt that there was someone on this side that when they slipped, they fell and hurt the wrist. And their wrist has not been the same. Who is this? Who is this person with the wrist injury? You, you actually fell down and and your wrist has not been the same. It's on this side of the room. Who is the person? Where are you at? Where are you at? It's, here, here's, here's how it works. You fell down, you hurt your wrist. It's you. Who, who is it? Where are you at? See, here's what I'll do. I'll help you out by waiting for you. I call it applying prophetic pressure. Who is it? I can feel it right on this side. Whoa! Where? Where are you? Whoa, it's there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, whoa. whoa hold, hold up. Who's on this side? Just a sec. There's, there you are. Oh, there, there. there. Whoa! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Prophesy. See, uh, uh, the reason why I'm so confident <laughs> is because I'm having visions. <laughs> the vision, Hallelujah. Woo! The vision doesn't lie. <laughs> here, come here. Come here. Woo, Jesus is going to heal you. Here, put your hands up. Yeah, this one, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. just put your hands up. Okay, yeah, Here, put your hands yes, up like yes. this. Ooh, Father, we mm. thank you in the name of Jesus. Power in Jesus' name. Now, now move it. Now move it. Now move it. Now move it. How does that feel? Yeah, she be no pain. No more pain. No more pain. Now, listen. The Lord is also going to touch your back. Do you need a miracle in the back? Yes. yes. Yeah, she needs a miracle in the back. Mm. Hallelujah. I saw the Spirit of God touching your back and bringing a healing. And this also affects nerves in your body. Especially with, with tingling. And, 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 and even I feel in your hands that there's affection from this. Yeah, uh, uh, what's that? My thumb. Yeah. Yep. See, uh, so uh, Holy Spirit is showing me about her back, about the nerve damage in the thumb, and now he's going to heal her. Put your hands out. I'm not going to touch you because his power is coming on you right now. There's the power of God right there. 
Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for a creative miracle. There's his anointing. Oh, And we speak to your back right now. And we command it in the name of Jesus to be recreated. Every trace of pain. Released right now. And Father, we thank you for that thumb. We thank you for the nerve damage. Being recreated right now. In Jesus' name. Okay, now take two steps forward. Now I want you to move your back. I want you to, uh, I want you to test it. Go like. How does that feel? Yeah, uh, yeah it should be good. So the pain's gone? No more. Now move the thumb. Check the thumb. Can you feel it? No more pain. Whoa. Come on, thank you, no Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I hear your prayers. You've been praying for your family. For them to be touched by the salvation power of God. You've been praying for your family, even some of them, to come out of religion and into Holy Spirit. You've been praying for mass salvation in your entire family. Listen, does this make sense? Yeah, I have been praying for my younger sister. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yes, yeah, so she's been Many. praying. Woo! Just put your hands out. God is going to give you the answer of this prayer. What is the sister's name? Gada. Gada? Lord, we thank you for Gada. And right now we speak salvation over her. Lord, I thank you, God, that she would be saved. Amen. We just mark this one with those answered prayers. Release right now. Thank you, Jesus. Now, where was the other one that fell? The other one that fell on the wrist. Where, where were they? There was someone over here. Just stand up. You don't need to come forward. Just stand up where you're at. Just stand right there. Okay, Put your hands up. It's like a Holy Ghost stick up. Put your hands up. <laughs> Father, we thank you okay. for the creative power of heaven. Right now, I command those wrists to be recreated. Amen. All the pain, all the ligament damage. Be recreated right now. Begin to move your wrists like this. Begin to move your wrists like this. Begin to move your wrists. Shake like that. Is, is the pain gone? No more pain. Come on, thank you, Jesus. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. yes. Listen, you guys, miracles are breaking out all over the room. God is revealing the secrets of people's hearts. And I, I'm telling you, the Lord is going to open up. He's going to open up the realm of heaven over people's lives. Pastor, come here. I want you to stand right here. And just, uh, just come. Put your hands out. Whew, I see the glory of the Lord coming on here. And listen, the Lord says that there is an anointing of wisdom and revelation that he's releasing on you. And even in the church in Tulsa, God is going to begin to release a fresh wave of the Spirit. Because a few years ago, it seemed like there was a, a, a wave that hit 
where the people were even more hungry at times and, it, and all of a sudden it seemed like something it took the hunger of people it's not that they're not hungry but what I'm saying though is that there was a, 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 a move that God had two years ago and you wondered how come that didn't fully happen and the Lord says now is the time for this now is the time for revival in your church and you're going to begin to see some things that the enemy tried to cut off a few years ago are going to come back now and God is going to move in greater glory he's going to move in greater power you've been asking God for the power of God listen does this make sense what I'm saying even the time frames and even what happened in the past coming back now yeah and 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 even your prayers you've been asking God for his power haven't you yes yeah I could see you and when you pray you pace <laughs> you're intense I, I see the anointing on you for intercession and I'm telling you tonight the bowls of heaven are pouring out over you and I see a lighthouse anointing where you're going to be a lighthouse for those in darkness and they're going to be drawn to you and so Lord we release that anointing of signs and wonders right now come on somebody give Jesus a big whoa, whoa. Glory to Jesus. Jesus. whoa. thank you Holy Spirit thank you Jesus thank you Jesus See, here's what we're doing. We're learning how to respond to the word of the Lord. See, we got nothing to lose but sickness. Nothing to lose but, but pain. Listen, I want every person that has cancer to get up here right now. Come up here right now. I felt the Lord say that he was going to heal cancer tonight. Listen, come up here. Whoa, whoa. Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Listen, he's going to heal you. Now listen, Jesus loves you. Just put your hands up. Just put your hands up. Yeah, Father, we just thank you. Here, take two steps forward. One, two, right there. A little tiny one back. A little tiny. Right there. Whew. Uh, see, the reason why I do that is because sometimes I see the angels and I've seen an angel right there and I'm smart enough to know that the angel, if he's there, it's for a purpose. And I see a healing angel. So what I've learned to do is put people in the angel. How many of you know in John chapter 5, it says that at the pool of Bethesda, there was an angel that came down from heaven. And he would stir the waters. And whoever would get into the waters, when those waters were stirred, would be totally healed of whatever sickness. And listen, I sense this kind of an angel around you. Now listen, how many know that Jesus is greater than the angels? Jesus. How many of you know we'd be very foolish to worship an angel? We're not supposed to worship angels. We worship Jesus. Amen. But how many of you know we'd be foolish to ignore the angels? Because the Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews that God's angels are ministering spirits Sent to assist those who are to inherit salvation. It says they're flames of fire and winds. 
And that's what I see. I see a flame of fire right there. And when I pray, God's going to activate healing in your life. Ask what her name is. Ding Sen. Ding Sen. Ding Sen. Stretch your hands out. Stretch your hands out. Lord, we thank you for Ding Sen. There's his fire right there. Right now we command in Jesus' name. Spirit of death, loose this woman. Right now we command every trace of cancer in the name of Jesus. Come out right now. And we speak life over you. We speak healing over you. We declare this body healed. No more cancer. No more sickness. You have to go now in Jesus' name. Well, we release the mighty power of God. And we mark her with deliverance. We mark her with healing. In Jesus' name. Now somebody give Jesus a mighty shout. Just let her rest right there. Listen, God wants to God wants to release fire tonight. Listen, I felt I felt the Lord say, I want you to pray and I want you to prophesy. Ooh. I want you to release miracles first. Then I want you to preach. You just step right over here. You right there. You step right there, right there. Put your hands up. <laughs> the fire of God's coming on you right now. Listen, He's marking you with a miracle working anointing. There's His fire coming on you right now. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. There's the fire coming on you right now. Receive a new mantle right now. In, whoo, there's the fire. <laughs> whoo, all the hair is standing on my head. Whoo, Father, we release that fire right now. Whoa, hallelujah. Jesus. Whoo, Jesus. Whoo, Jesus. Now, I don't know if you had pain before we prayed. Did you have pain? Nala. Nala. Yes. She Is the pain gone? Aku nadi la. Manalo. She no more pain. Come on, hallelujah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Jesus. She had pain when she came. And now we prayed all the pain has left. Aku nadi mo ne mishiro. Is that whoa. true? Mala. Yes, no more pain. Come on, someone give Jesus a whoa, pain. Whoa, glory to Jesus. Hey. I believe God removed cancer from your body. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Yes, you. Now listen, God wants to release fire tonight. Woo! He wants to release fire tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Come on! How many of you want the fire of God? Ooh. Hallelujah. Ooh. So I want to read something to you. Mm -hmm. Matthew chapter 3, mm -hmm. verse 11, mm -hmm. says, it says, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, mm -hmm. but he who is coming after me is mightier than I, mm -hmm. whose sandals I'm not even worthy to carry. Mm -hmm. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. See, I want to talk about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about the baptism of fire. See, there's a lot of people that believe in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, in the church, we preach a lot on the Holy Ghost. We, we talk about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but not so much the fire part. See, I think universally, all around the world, the church only received half the baptism. 
They received enough of the baptism to get the gifts of the Spirit. To speak in tongues. And, and the church has made that the fullness of God. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that he's going to release the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. Come on, I want you to look at your neighbor and say, I want fire. Come on, tell him, I want the fire. So you got to understand something. When Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan, when he saw John, you got to understand something. He, he saw John, and when John saw him, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And you know what happens is that Jesus asked John to baptize him. And you have to understand that, that John, he goes, no, 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 I should be baptized by you. But Jesus said, do this so that all righteousness can be fulfilled. And I want you to see something. Because uh, there's uh, there's three baptisms mentioned in the actual scripture that I read to you. There's the baptism onto repentance. See, John the Baptist was baptizing people onto repentance in the River Jordan. But then there's a second baptism talking about when Jesus comes he'll baptize you in the Holy Ghost but then there's a third and fire see you have to understand a lot of the church when they look at the baptism of Jesus they miss the and fire part here's the reason why because when we read about Jesus being Jesus baptized, I mean, you know, there's some glorious truths in the scriptures. In Matthew chapter 3, it says that when John puts him under the water, and he comes up out of the water, it says the heavens open, and the Spirit of God descends on him in the form of a dove and rests and remains. And the Bible says that God the Father spoke from heaven. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But how many of you know it didn't stop there? See, I want you to understand something. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, it'll open the heavens over your life. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, God the Father will begin to speak to you. When you're baptized in the Holy Ghost, you'll start to move in the, the, the anointing of God. The gifts of God. But it doesn't necessarily mean you've received the fire. How many know that Jesus, after he was baptized in the Holy Spirit, after the Father spoke over him, after the Spirit of God descended upon him, in the form of a dove and rested and remained, how many know that it says in Mark 1.12, it says immediately, the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. Has anybody ever been tempted. Listen, you got to understand that Jesus, when he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, when God activated him to hear the voice of God, when God activated him to, to, to move in power, he first had to overcome temptation. And the Spirit of God drove him into the wilderness. How many know that's not the fun part? Because, it, how many know, we'd rather just camp out 
And the goosebumps and the tickles. We, we'd rather just sit with the joy. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing the voice of God. Oh, I can see in the spirit. All the gifts of God. But I want you to understand something. There's another level. And you know what? The spirit of God's purpose it's not just to anoint you but he wants to transform you. He wants to transform your life. He wants to remove every hook in the heart every stronghold that the devil could pull you down with. Jesus wants to remove it. The Bible says says that Jesus could do what he could do because the devil had no place in his heart. There was no place for the devil to pull. But you got to understand, if you want the fullness of God, you got to walk through the fire. Many of you have been walking through the fire and you didn't even know it. Oh, and sometimes when the fire shows up, it's different than what we think. Now, how many know we're spiritual? How many know we like to pray? We, we like to pray pretty prayers. Like this. Lord, send your fire, God. I want more of your fire. Oh, set me on fire. Holy Ghost, send fire. And then you know what happens the, the next week? You feel like all hell breaks loose against ah, you. And you're going to your friends. Pray for me. Oh, the devil's attacking me. Oh, I'm going through the fire. Come on, anybody know what I'm talking about? Well, what if you, it's not the devil who's attacking you? What if God's actually releasing his fire to bring up the hidden strongholds on the inside so that they can be seen so he can remove them forever. See, before Jesus could preach one sermon, before Jesus could work one miracle, he had to go into the wilderness and be tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. And Satan came to him and he said, if you're the son of God, listen, did you know that God and the devil are both asking you the same question tonight? Who do you think you are. Who do you think you are? Do you know that the wilderness is about identity? See, if you want to walk in the fullness of God, you've got to live from a place of being a son and a daughter of God. Not an orphan mindset. See, you're not orphans anymore. When you got saved, when you got born again, you were translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of the glorious light of the sun. And so you've got to understand something. God's not out to kill you. He's out to heal you. And it's his fire that removes the strongholds. See, sometimes what happens is we pray dangerous prayers. God knows what you're doing. But you don't know what you're doing. You're just, Lord, I want the fire! And the Lord goes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, all the strongholds start to come. All of a sudden, you thought you were over the anger that you had. The rejection issue. The fear. And then all of a sudden, someone says one little thing to you. And you're like, ah! And then you go, pray for me. And the devil's attacking me. 
But what if it ain't the devil? What if it's the fire? And the fire is producing the glory of God in your life. Listen, how many know if we went to Myanmar and we went and dug in the ground and we found gold? How many know we could take that gold? But before it can be used, it has to undergo the fire. You can't just take a big chunk of gold out of the, 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 the mountain, out of the ground, and go to the jeweler and go, make me jewelry. You know what they'll do? they'll put the gold through a refining process they'll heat the gold up to the place where it melts they'll heat it with so much fire that all the, all the dirt and all the rocks and all the stuff that's not valuable will come to the surface and then they'll take a ladle or a spoon scoop off all of the worthless stuff throw it out and now there's pure gold See, this is what the fire of God is doing in you is God's removing the dirt he's burning away the shame he's removing the stumbling blocks the things that trip you up he wants to remove the strongholds. And he chooses to use his fire to do it. See, but this is why the fire of God is not a popular message. This is why more people are not preaching on the fire. But I want to say something to you. The fire of God is not negative. The fire of God is good. In fact, I want to say something to you. The fire of the Holy Ghost is not judgment to you. But it's love. It's perfect love. See, the only one that the fire of God is judgment to is the devil. It's the devil. See, the fire that God wants to give you is judgment to the devil but love to his sons and daughters. So what does the fire judge? Sin, sickness, disease, pain, torment. Anything that opposes the fullness of Jesus, the fire judges it and removes it. So you've got to understand, God wants to release authority. He wants to release dominion. And it's as you begin to embrace the fire that authority begins to be released. How many of you remember Jesus? Jesus, when he told his disciples, he said, get in the boat, we're going to go to the other side. And he went and he fell asleep on the pillow. And as they're rowing to the other side, a great storm comes. I mean, you, you need to understand something. The actual Greek language is saying it's like a typhoon level. level. <laughs> And they all freak out and wake Jesus up. And they go, what are we going to do? We're going to die. And Jesus stands up and with one word, he rebukes the storm. He says, be still. Peace. And the, the storm dies. Who wants to walk in that kind of authority? Who wants to walk in that kind of dominion? 
Listen, I'm telling you, I, I'll never forget one time. I got on an airplane. And I was flying from Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver, Canada, to Calgary, Canada. Calgary, Canada. When we took off from the plane, listen, the turbulence was so bad. I mean, it started. I looked out the window, and the wings looked like a bird. It was so violent that the, the, the pilot got on the intercom. And the, 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 the stewardess were passing out the drinks. And the pilot said, Stewardess, quickly, get back to your seats. They abandoned the carts. Water flying everywhere. And everybody was in a panic. And I heard the Holy Spirit. He said, I want you to rebuke this turbulence out loud in front of everybody. So I stood up and said, right now, in the name of Jesus, I command peace be still and the plane went not one more bump the entire way instantly God killed the turbulence now I want you to understand something when you walk with God in the fire you'll hear his voice and when you hear his voice and you're obedient to his voice breakthrough will happen dominion will happen now I, I have to tell you about three weeks after that I took another flight. And as the flight took off, turbulence. And I said, don't worry. I got the anointing for turbulence. And I said, in the name of Jesus, peace. And it got worse. And I said, God. Oh, he said, I didn't tell you to do it this time, son. So you have to understand something. Authority, dominion is released in hearing God's voice. It's released in obedience. We don't just challenge things because we want to. We go because God says to go. We do what he says because he says to do it. Notice everybody I prayed for tonight that he said to pray for. They got their miracle. Because authority and dominion comes in obedience. Now I want you to see this. Listen, there are three things that the baptism of fire will release in your life. Number one, it will release purity in your life. Who wants purity in their life? Listen, God wants to set every person free from anything that holds them back. Whether that be addictions, pornography, whether that be anger, fear. Whether, how many know that when you get saved and born again, you're not instantly like Jesus? Come on, we wish we were. <laughs> how many know Christianity is not microwave Christianity? Bing. But it's a relationship. So I want you to see something. Because in the book of Isaiah chapter 4, it says that God wants to release the spirit of burning. And that the spirit of burning will remove all of the filth out of the, the church. And it says after the church embraces the spirit of burning, it says that God will be a shelter in time of need. It says that he'll be the cool in, in a time of heat. It says, it says that God's manifest presence will lead his people. But it's the spirit of burning that will remove the filth of Zion. 
Listen, when you're born again, how many know that there's still filth? There's stuff that we need God to burn out. Some of it is there because it's what you've been through. Some of you have been through situations that are very difficult, very unfair. Many people are taken advantage of. Many people are abused. And because the devil tried to take them out, they're like soldiers for Jesus that are wounded. But God wants to come with the spirit of burning, and he wants to burn everything out that the devil wanted to hinder you with. And even he wants to remove memories, trauma, abuse and even the effects of rejection he wants to remove them and the spirit of burning will burn it away so that you can encounter the presence of the Lord look at this I want you to see this it tells us in Malachi chapter 3 now we're just going to read this quickly Malachi chapter 3 verses 2 and 3 it says but who can endure the day of his or who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears for he is like a refiner's fire and a launder's soap and he will sit as a a, a, a refiner and a purifier of silver he will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they might offer an offering unto the Lord in righteousness now I want you to see this because it says the fire of God is a person it says who can endure in the day of his coming how many of you know Jesus is the man of fire how many of you know that Jesus is the burning fire of God that's in our hearts and the Holy Spirit is a burning man he's a man of fire and when Jesus walks into the room when the fire walks into the room he comes with one purpose see God wants you to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire because when you do it's like a launderer's soap comes to cleanse your heart remember the spirit of burning that I talked about earlier removes filth. You want to know what filth is? Shame that's on someone's life. Guilt. Condemnation. Where people are held back because of what they've done in the past. Every time you advance, the devil reminds you, oh, but remember what you did? Remember what you did? You can never move in God. You'll never enter your destiny. Listen, the fire will burn that away. But not only that, he'll cleanse you. He'll cleanse you. Oh, he'll cleanse you. So that you're like gold in the spirit. Listen, how many know that Jesus in the book of Revelation, he said this, I advise you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you'd be clothed in white garments and that the shame of your nakedness would be uh, covered. How many of you know in the world people are covered with shame? They live in shame because of not being right with God but also all the things that they do. How many know the world is looking they're looking for affection. They're looking for fulfillment. 
They're looking for affirmation. And what they don't understand, their heart is created for the affirmation of only one. And that's Jesus. And you know what? In the realm of the spirit, the clothing over unsaved people is shame. But how many know when you're a son and a daughter of God, when you're born again, the Father gives you a robe of righteousness. He puts sandals on your feet. He puts a ring on your hand. He gives you a kiss on your head. He puts an anointing on your life that you're never the same. But how do we get that? We seek the fire. We go after Jesus. And when we do, the launder soap of heaven. How many know that laundry soap is the clean clothes? See, when you get saved, the laundry soap of heaven cleanses you. And you get a new garment from God. No longer are you clothed in shame and fear and nakedness. But you're now clothed in light. You're clothed in salvation, eternal life, and God wants to give you more because he wants his glory to rest on you. See, when his glory rests on your life, you carry dominion. Everywhere you go, the presence of God comes. Listen, we're, we're now over 780 nights in revival. In San Diego at the outpouring. In 2016. My wife, Moran, and I received a prophetic word that God was going to release his fire from heaven in San Diego and that revival would break out and that we would steward that move of God and we would take that fire all over the world. This is why we're here. It's to release revival fire in this place that you would begin to carry the glory of God. Now I want to say something to you. The glory of God is tangible. When the glory shows up, supernatural things happen. See, one of the purposes of the fire of God in the Song of Solomon, chapter 8, uh, uh, verses 6 and 7, we're just going to read this quickly. And in, in, in Song of Solomon 8, Six and seven. It says, it says, set me as a seal on your heart, as a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy as cruel as the grave. Its flames are a flame of fire, a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love. Nor can the floods drown it. See, this is the second baptism. Listen, the first one was the spirit of burning, the refiner's fire. This is the second one. It's the baptism of love. See, the fire of God is love to you and judgment to the enemy. And when you carry the fire, you carry the manifest presence. Listen, I'll never forget about 80 nights into revival. I was in my car down the street from the church that we host the meetings in. I was listening to worship and I was praying in tongues for about an hour. And all of a sudden, someone knocked on my window. And I was like, and I looked over at him and, and, and 
I pushed the window down. And when they saw me, they said, Oh, Pastor! Oh, Sia. I'm so sorry. Oh, sorry, ba. I, I, I wasn't trying to disturb you. They said, I just didn't know where the meeting was, so I knocked to ask. When the window rolled down, the glory of God came out of the car and hit him. Boom! And he went, boom, flew off his feet. Boom, right in the middle of the street. Started shaking under the power of God. And all of a sudden, a police officer pulled up. How many know this is a scary situation? <laughs> He's on the ground going, ah, la, la, la. the police officer pulls up. This is not a vision, this is real life. And so I'm yelling, get up, the police are here. And, and all of a sudden the guy gets up. And the police officer goes, what's going on? And, and he goes, ah. he's getting hit with the fire. Ah. And the guy goes, what is happening here? I said, don't worry, sir. I'm the pastor down the street. And uh, this is Jesus hitting him. And I'm telling you, I thought that the police officer was going to freak out. He goes, I heard about Jesus. He said, I heard he heals people. He said, my elbow is messed up. He goes, do you think it could work for me? I said, let's try. I pointed my hand out the window. And I said, in the name of Jesus, I command your elbow to be healed. He feels a and he's totally healed on the spot. The police officer. Yeah. So I get out of the car because I want to lead him to Jesus. But he was so freaked out by the power of God, he drove off. Listen, when you're a man of God, the police run from you. And then I look, and there's the guy. He kind of looked like some of the leaders today at the seminar. Everybody was laid out everywhere. But see, you can carry the manifest presence of God to where it's tangible. I just rolled the window down. The glory of God knocked a guy out and healed a police officer. And I didn't even have to go to church to preach. See, God wants this anointing to show up in your workplace. He wants this anointing to show up in your family gatherings. He, he wants you to carry such an anointing of fire that everywhere you go people get touched by the power of God. See, this is what Peter walked in. The Bible said that it, it, when he would go to pray at the hour of prayer the book of Acts says that they would lay people on their sick beds and on couches just hoping that the shadow of Peter would move and touch them. See, there's a realm in God where you can carry the anointing of God's glory in such a tangible way that you don't even have to pray. God just starts doing stuff. Who wants that anointing? Who wants that anointing? So then we got to get hungry for the fire. Now notice in the scripture, that song of Solomon scripture, it says, set me as a seal upon the heart. Then it says, set me as a seal upon the arm. How many of you know the heart represents intimacy. 
The arm represents work of ministry. Your ability to stretch out and touch people. Did you know that God requires your heart before your arm? Before he can use you with the power and the supernatural fire of God. Like we read about in the book of Acts. He needs to have your heart. Your whole heart. He wants to set your heart on fire. Listen, yes. The gifts of the Spirit will move. But what I'm talking about is greater than the gifts of the Spirit. I'm not downplaying the gifts of the Spirit. We need the gifts of the Spirit. But we also need an anointing. Unusual miracles. The glory of God. Signs and wonders. Hearing the voice of God. Supernatural clarity that the world would wonder about Jesus. Listen, I was in a meeting like this, and there was a, a, a man in the room. The Lord spoke to me. He said, There's a man here named, uh, or there's a man here that has a cousin named, named Raphael. One man that has this. There's about 400 people. I called the man out like I was doing tonight. Where are you? One man put his hand up. I walked back there and by word of knowledge I told him, I said, your cousin Raphael is in a spiritual prison. And God wants to set him free. I said, I see an angel going to heaven. And I see God taking Raphael to salvation. The guy stopped me and said, that's crazy. He said, his son named Angel just died and went to heaven. Sorry? His son named Angel just died and went to heaven. And he said, because of that, he's been mad at God. And I said, let's pray for him right now. We prayed for his salvation. Then I said to him, how long has it been since you've seen Raphael? He said, long time, haven't seen him. You know, we were doing five nights of revival. That happened the first night. On the third day, he ran into Raphael at the store. And he told him the prophetic word. He showed him on the live stream. Me prophesying over him. And in the middle of the shopping mall, the power of God overtook Raphael and his wife. They trembled. They fell on the ground and cried out, what must we do to be saved? And they got saved in the, on the spot. And the man came the next night and gave the testimony. Raphael is out of a spiritual prison and he's saved. See, this level of anointing and glory does not come out of a gift. It comes out of intimacy with God. It comes out of glory. It comes out of embracing the fire. It comes out of stepping in to the anointing of Jesus by paying the same price as Jesus. You know what's interesting? Jesus fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And the Bible tells us after he went through the wilderness and the fire and he overcame temptation it says he came out of the wilderness in the power of the Spirit and the angels of God ministered to him. Now let me just ask you a question. Listen, I'm not trying to tell everybody you have to do a 40-day fast. What I'm saying to you is this. How many of you know 40 days is not a very long time in the scope 
scope of eternity. It's like a blink in the eye. And this is my word for you. If you get serious with God over the next month and a half and you begin to press into his presence he's going to release a fire on you. He's going to release a fire within you. And you know what? I'm not saying you got to do the fasting part. But what I'm saying is this, is if we get serious with God and we get hungry for God. See, it's so easy to be hungry in one season and familiar with God in the next. See, there's one more fire baptism that God wants to release and that's the baptism of the fiery witness how many know that we have a mandate as a church worldwide we have a mandate from Jesus Jesus said in the great commission he said, go into all the world and preach the good news of the kingdom. He said, those who believe will be saved. Those who do not will be damned. He said this, he said, but to those that believe in my name, he said they'll cast out demons, and they'll speak in new tongues, they'll lay their hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. See, God wants to put a baptism of fire to be a witness for him. See, he wants to burn away all fear of man. He wants to burn away everything that hinders your faith from having confidence to share the love of God with people. Listen, we don't have to be afraid when we have Jesus in our life. I'll never forget, I was on the streets in a city, a dangerous city. My wife and I, we were preaching the gospel to people on the streets. And a man with an AK-47 walked AK up to us. He said, you stop preaching right now. And I'm telling you, one of my spiritual fathers looked at him and said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And the guy went, huh? And he froze. And my spiritual father said, preach. We preached. We, we got everybody saved. And as soon as we were done preaching, the man with the machine gun came out of the trance and starts weeping. He goes, I have to get saved. What did you do to me? Listen, I don't care what comes against you. You carry the glory. If it's not your time, the devil can't stop you. But look at this. I want you to see this. And then we're going to pray. Look at this, Isaiah chapter 6. We're going to read this very quickly. It says, uh, well, actually, I'm just going to tell you about it. Listen, you guys. These are the only ones that are hungry tonight. Does anybody else want fire? Listen, if you want the fire, I... I'm telling you, the fire is on the altar. The fire is always on the altar because the altar is about intimacy with God. See, sometimes you got to get over your flesh. You got to get over your familiarity. See, sometimes we get familiar with a God that we hardly even know. See, God wants to take us from glory to glory and from strength to strength. He wants to release His fire upon a generation 
That they would begin to look like Jesus on the earth. That they would begin to move with power. With resurrection power. With deliverance. Authority. Dominion. See, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Isaiah the prophet is taken into a heavenly encounter. And when he's in heaven, he sees the king upon his throne. And the train of his robe fills the temple. And the doorpost of the actual throne room the, the pillars in the throne room begin to shake at the praise of heaven. They begin to shake at the voice of the Lord. And all of a sudden, Isaiah says, Woe am I, for I'm a man of unclean lips. See, when he encounters the holy presence of God, his first reaction was not excitement, but he was afraid. There was shame. He said, Woe am I, for I'm a man of unclean lips. Who am I to see the Lord? See, God wants to burn away all of that. I mean, we know that God is, He wants to be your friend. But He's a holy God. We can never lose sight of the fear of the Lord. Come on, the Bible says He's a holy and a jealous God. He's an all consuming fire. Come on, in the book of Daniel, Daniel saw the God of heaven. He was a pillar of fire from the waist up. Ezekiel saw the God of heaven hey. coming on the throne. Whoa. And he was a pillar of fire. When John in the book of Revelation saw Jesus, he was, his appearance was like the sun. Glistening in radiant fire. His eyes were like fire. Listen, if God is who he says he is, in his word, if God is fire, how many of you know we better change the way we think about it? You know what happens? Here's the better part. When you're honest with God, and you live in the fear of the Lord, he'll change the situation. So here's what happens. An angel grabs a coal from the altar of God's fire. The angel flies up to Isaiah and touches his lips with the fire. And instantly, God removes all the iniquity. He removes all the shame. He removes all the fear. And then he hears the voice of the Lord. Say, who will go for me? Who can I say? And all of a sudden, his heart changes. He goes, for, he goes from, woe am I, who am I to come before the Lord? He stands up and says, Here I am, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if you're in this room tonight and you want to be sent with the fire, you get up here to the altar right now. You get to the altar right now. Sometimes God will make it inconvenient. Because He'll make them make a choice. Do you know what the enemy of revival is? The enemy of revival is a been there and done that attitude. Where we begin to actually think. 
don't need to go to the altar. I'm already saved. I don't need to go to the altar. That's, that's for those people. Listen, I'm prophesying to people. He wants to break hunger open in your heart. Fire falls Me. upon hunger. If you want the fire, get out of your seats and come to the front. Yes. God's going to release that. Wow. I want you to begin to worship Him. I want you to begin to praise Him right now. Oh. Oh. Because I believe God is going to set your hearts on fire tonight. Listen, just like his word says in the Song of Solomon chapter 8. It says that the fire of God is a flame that many waters cannot quench. Nor can the floods of the enemy put out. And it says that God wants to set a seal upon our hearts and he wants to set a seal upon our arms before you can be used in the work of ministry to stretch your hand out and touch people before your, your arms are anointed he wants to anoint your hand or your heart he wants to anoint your heart right now I want you to put your hands up. And he's going to come right now. I want to just keep it in this uh, moment right here. Because we don't have to hype this. Because the Holy Spirit's going to come like a wind. And he's going to come like a fire. And he's about to mark you. Some of you are going to feel the hand of God begin to push on you. The weight of his presence is going to come down. I want you to forget about everyone around you. And just let him touch you right now. But I'm going to pray for three things. I'm going to pray for the refiner's fire. I'm going to pray for the spirit of burning 
And I'm going to pray for the baptism of love. Here he comes. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we thank you that you're coming tonight with fire. Lord, your word says that if we lift up the name of Jesus, you'll glorify the Son. Father, I've lifted your Son's name up this afternoon. And now, Lord, I thank you that you confirm the word of God with fire from heaven. Right now, we release fire all over this room. We release fire all over this place. Lord, release the fire of God. Release the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Lord, release the Spirit of God. Mark people right now. Mark people right now. Mark people right now. There it is right there. There it is right there. touch with a coal of fire. I see the angels in the room. The seraphim angels. Listen, God is sending the angelic hosts because he wants to commission people to preach the gospel. He wants to commission a generation with boldness. He wants to commission a generation to touch the nations with his power. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we release the angels of heaven right now. We release the coals of fire. We release the fire of the spirit. We release the fire of the spirit right now. Coals of fire all over this place. Lord, release your glory. You know what I started out with? Matthew 3.11 Indeed, I baptize you with water onto repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I. Sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. That's a sign and a wonder. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. Receive the fire. All over this place, receive the fire. Receive the baptism of the fire of God. Oh, receive the fire. Receive the fire. Fire of God.
God will confirm his word with signs, wonders, and miracles. See, that was a sign that we release the baptism of the fire of God right at 3.11 in the morning. You know what it's a sign of? It's a sign that God is going to release a new baptism of the fire upon the Burmese. That he's going to release a move of the Spirit. Even in Myanmar. That God is going to release a move of the Spirit in this nation. Through you. And through this people group. God has chosen you. He has chosen you. For this moment. For this time. For this day. Pastor? Yes, Pastor. The Lord is anointing you. He's putting a mantle of fire on you. I saw earlier today an angel of the Lord. An angel of fire that was following you in the earlier service. And listen, the Lord says that he's releasing an anointing to you to raise up burning ones. To raise up burning ones. To raise up a generation who will carry the fire of God like no other generation. To carry the fire of God with signs, wonders, and miracles. And I see right now that this moment, this, this moment of 311, this moment of Matthew 311, God is anointing you to carry the mandate of of Matthew 3.11 to bring people into the authentic baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. And he's literally caused your life to become a torch. You're like a torch in his hand. And everywhere you go in the nations, everywhere that he sends you, everywhere that you go, you're going to light people on fire. Generations are going to be marked. Generations are going to be touched because of the fire that you carry. And I see the Lord releasing multitudes of angels. I see chariots of fire all around. I see the Lord releasing chariots of fire all around you. Even as Elisha the prophet had the chariots of fire surrounding him, that even the natural armies could not stop him. And just like Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open the servant's eyes to see. The Lord says that you're going to pray and you're going to see your generation's eyes open to the glory of God. You're going to see your generation's eyes open to the fire of God, to the reality of the kingdom of God. I see many resurrections and I see much power being released. And listen, the Lord says that even what he began in you five years ago, what he began in you five years ago and even how he gave you a vision for souls and a vision for a generation to be touched by God's power, to be raised up out of religion and to be brought into the army of God. He is fulfilling this and he is starting something new. In fact, this week starts a new thing. This is the unfolding and the unraveling. This is the beginning where God is going to raise up the champions. He's going to raise up those that are going to carry fire. They're going to carry resurrection. They're going to carry power. They're going to carry signs and wonders. They're going to be those that have the fourth man in the fire. A generation of purity who will not bow their knee to darkness. A generation like Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. A generation like Daniel who will sell out to the Lord even in the midst of the fires of persecution the fourth man, Jesus Christ will show up in the fire and I see him marking your ministry right now with a new level of manifest presence a new level of glory listen, there are going to be meetings that you do in the next few years where even glory clouds are going to appear in the meetings. Physical glory clouds where people will see the glory of the Lord come in a tangible way. There will even be a sign where there will even be rain that will come inside of the building and God will release signs and wonders in the natural just like they're happening in the supernatural. But I see the baptism of fire being released through your life touching people's lives. And it's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands being touched. You're a revivalist as well.
well as a pastor. And the prophetic mantle is coming on you. And I'm telling you, God is going to open your eyes to see in ways you've never seen. He's going to give you dreams and visions. And I'm praying right now for the release of that anointing. Father, release that anointing in Jesus' name. Come on, someone give Jesus a big hand. because we have to be out pretty soon. But I want you to put your hand on your heart. I believe he wants to mark you. Listen, we're going to be back tomorrow. Tomorrow night. Miranda's going to preach again. I'm going to be preaching again. But I want to pray that God would seal your heart and that he would seal your arm see that spirit realm knows those that have been sealed with the fire when the devil's see the fire of God resting on your life they run they don't want to be around you because they know that the fire of God is judgment to them so I want you to put your hand on your heart Lord, that you'd seal their hearts, God. That, Lord, you release identity, Lord. Oh, the spirit of sonship. Oh, Lord, I pray, Father, that you'd speak. That you'd open up the heavens over your people, God. That you cause our hearts to burn. To burn for you, Lord. Lord, raise up a generation of burning ones. A generation who carries the love of God. Who carries the fire of God. Who carries the power of God. A generation who will pay the price to know you, God. Who will pay the price to carry your anointing, your manifest glory, your power, God. Lord, release that anointing. Seal our hearts, Lord, with the seal of your heart, with the seal of your fire. Raise your hands up. Actually, I want you to raise your right hand up. Just raise your right hand up. Because he's going to seal your right hand with his fire so that you can reach out and touch others. Father, I thank you right now that you've sealed our hearts, Lord. Now I'm asking that you would seal our arms. Lord, release a grace for the power of God to flow through our hands. Lord, release a grace 
제주라고 떠나마 for the presence of God for the love of Jesus to flow through our lives to touch the world around us Lord release boldness boldness God to share the gospel with the lost and dying generation Lord release a breakthrough anointing over everyone in this room over everyone watching on the live in Jesus name and everybody said come on give Jesus a big shout Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Jeremy, as a luck hook, give it all for you, y'all.